Why do we laugh at things? Laughter is such a fascinating aspect of human behavior. It's intrigued scientists, philosophers, and artists for centuries. People laugh for many reasons. Uh, some people laugh because they heard something or saw something they thought was funny, while other people laugh because they feel awkward or uncomfortable. Sometimes people laugh because they're simply happy, while other people laugh because they're absolutely miserable. Sometimes because of having Tourette syndrome, well, I just start giggling as a tick and it scares my cat. <laughs> In, in uh, exploring the multifaceted nature of laughter though, it becomes clear that, that laughter plays a very complex and significant role in our lives. People laugh for many reasons, but one thing I've noticed for, uh, in the past uh, seven years is that laughter can be a very powerful thing. Uh, I heard a joke years ago that went, La laughter is the best medicine. Well, unless you have medicine, in which case medicine is the best medicine. <laughs> But that first part, laughter is the best medicine. How is it medicine? How is it healing? What is it doing? I mean, laughter has a profound impact on our physical and mental well-being. When we laugh, our bodies re release endorphins, those natural feel-good or pain-go-bye-bye chemicals <laughs> that uh, promote an overall sense of well-being. It's no wonder why many of us who struggle with uh, stress or anxiety or depression often watch comedy movies or TV shows or go to live comedy shows as a way of relaxing. Laughter and comedy, they help us relax and forget about everything going on in our lives, even if just for that moment of that fall. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, since I was a kid, I've been diagnosed with, oh, well, a few things. Uh, uh, Tourette syndrome, OCD, ADHD, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, mild depression, seasonal depression, clinical depression, severe depression, the depression of not knowing which depression I have today. <laughs> and one of my exes diagnosed me as grumpy. <laughs> Having all these things though hasn't exactly made my life easy. I started getting depression, intrusive suicidal thoughts and existential dread before I was even 10 years old. These are things I still struggle with to this day. And the tics that I get from having Tourette syndrome have been increasing as I've gotten older. So someone actually told me the other day that having Tourette syndrome makes me technically disabled. And I was like, eh, more like technically disabled. <laughs> but before I started opening up about all this stuff and starting to feel more comfortable and, and just free about all this stuff, I tried hiding all of it. Uh, because I feel like we live in a society where people are often, they're pressured to conceal or repress all of their struggles because these are personal issues and they shouldn't be discussed openly. Uh, throughout my life, I was always around people that made me feel like it wasn't even appropriate to discuss these things. So as a result, I just concealed and tried to suppress and repress everything. And that resulted in everything getting worse. Because I feel like when everyone is constantly trying to hide everything and not talk about these things, it makes us feel very alone. As if no one else could possibly be going through the same things as us because everyone else seems to be doing just fine. But we're not. In 2016, shortly after I started doing stand-up comedy, I made the pivotal decision to start talking about my journey and experiences with Tourette syndrome through stand-up comedy. I started writing jokes about my experiences and I told them at an open mic. My feeling at the time was I might as well try to find a way to be happy about this stuff or honestly I should just kill myself. Because at this, like, after so many years of internal and physical suffering, I just felt like what was the point? But to my surprise, after that open mic that night, a lot of people came up to me afterward to thank me for talking about Tourette syndrome because no one talks about this stuff. Many people even came up to me to say they knew a Tourette person who would love what I did. So some people even came up to me afterward to open up about their own struggles and their own diagnoses and how they wished they could be more open about it. Not one of them said my jokes were funny. <laughs> but that experience of openly discussing my experiences made me start not just coming to terms with my tics, but it made me, it kind of shed light on the importance of discussing such 
personal issues openly. In a society where everyone is constantly trying to hide and not talk about anything, this experience made me realize that it was okay to talk about this and, it, and we absolutely should be talking about this stuff. After that open mic, I decided to keep writing material about my experiences and uh, I just started, I started noticing very quickly that there's a transformable uh, potential of laughter that, that involves evolving from self-deprecation to, to self-empowerment. Self-deprecation and humor it involves putting yourself down to make yourself the punchline of a joke. However, my form of, of stand-up comedy, or self-empowerment humor as I call it, takes a different approach. By lifting yourself up using humor to find strength in your, weak, or in your struggles, rather than putting yourself down and finding weakness in your struggles, you start f turning these experiences into a sense of empowerment and pride. And, the different, and, and even though in humor, self-empowerment and self-deprecation can sound very, very similar, the, the difference is how you feel about yourself after what you've said. And uh, like in joking about all my, my uh, tics and my disorders and all this stuff, I found that because of, of all of that, I became more comfortable with all of it. I became more comfortable with talking to people and being open about it and letting people know that this is a thing. And because of that, I feel better about having all of it. And I feel like that's the big difference between self-deprecation and self-empowerment is the power you give yourself over these things. A friend of mine is often telling me, if you're laughing about something, you're not crying about it. And I think that's a very important thing to think about. For example, one of the tics that I have from Tourette syndrome, which you've probably noticed by this point in my talk, <laughs> I ta talk about it a lot, is uh, I, uh, my voice cracks and I squeak. I mean, when you sound like you've swallowed a rubber duck, <laughs> you kind of have to discuss the squeaky elephant in the room. <laughs> There's simply not enough WD-40 out there for the squeak. <laughs> but the thing is, I've had this, this uh, tick in some form or another since I was a teenager. And until I started being open about it and just like letting it happen, I tried hiding it the best I could. And the, what I would do is, uh, well, like throughout my life, huh, I would spend every day tensing the muscles in my neck and shoulders as much as I could in hopes that if this happened or when it happened, it would at least come out quieter. The problem is this resulted in tremendous amount of pain and uh, explosions of this tick as soon as that tension would be released. So instead, I've been trying to learn how to embrace it, how to, in a sense, celebrate it. Because first of all, I've gotten a lot of gigs from talking about this tick and Tourette syndrome in general. That's right, I've made a decent amount of money from having Tourette syndrome. <laughs> I told this to my therapist once and she goes, yeah, me too. <laughs> but it, the thing is, in being open about it and in learning to embrace it, my whole attitude, my whole energy about this stuff, it just, it changes. It makes me feel like I wanna learn how to live with this stuff rather than suffer from it. But the thing is, I, I've, I've been trying to like, Shortly after I started opening up about this stuff, uh, there was a, a moment that was very, very powerful for me in 2018, where a good friend of mine said to me, Dan, do you realize how much you've changed in the past few months? And uh, he was absolutely right. This was about a year and a half after I started doing stand-up comedy, but I realized that uh, just talking to new crowds of people about Tourette syndrome and doing my jokes for different crowds several nights a week for a few months everything, my whole attitude and, and all of my energy about this changed. I started feeling more confident. I started feeling more free. I felt like I could finally just be myself and not worry about anything, not be afraid. It's kind of that feeling of when everyone knows about the elephant in the room and accepts and understands it. Is there really an elephant in the room? Or in my situation, if everyone knows I have Tourette syndrome, is there really a need to be afraid anymore? Because if someone knows I have Tourette syndrome and still tries to put me down, certainly says a lot more about them than it does about me. But shortly after I started opening up about all this stuff, I saw my friend Elva Doug, who also has Tourette syndrome, performing stand-up. This was the first time I saw her perform. I didn't even know she existed until this night. It was also this, the first time in my life I met another person with Tourette syndrome. And when I was listening to her talking about her experiences with Tourette syndrome, and hearing the audience react to her, 
I felt a sense of pride for being a Tourettic person that I've never felt in my entire life. Oh, I listen, hearing another person with Tourette syndrome talking about this stuff and being so open about it and hearing an audience being so loving and understanding, it, it didn't necessarily make me feel more normal, but, but it made me feel more unique and appreciated. And I decided that night that I was going to keep writing material about all these experiences and I was going to get so good at stand-up comedy with the hopes that one day I would be able to do a show with Elva to raise awareness for Tourette syndrome. And in 2018, we did that. We, we applied for that show for the first year of the Reykjavik Fringe Festival. And we got a friend of ours, Hannah, who was a comedian diagnosed with schizophrenia. We got her to join the show. The, the idea was to get comedians with neurodiversity to raise awareness for neurodiversity, mental health, and disability, but in a fun way, in a way that all of us can enjoy. And we decided to call that show, My Voices Have Tourette's. The idea, the idea behind the show was simply to just perform it during the festival, and that would be the end of it. However, in doing this show, this show ended up exceeding all of our initial expectations and became a remarkable success but by getting us opportunities to speak at schools and organizations, and it became a weekly show. And if it weren't for COVID putting an end to things in 2020, we might still be doing that show as a weekly show to this day. The thing is though, but because of this, the success of the show though, I started realizing that all of this that I'm talking about became more than simply entertainment. It became a vehicle for changing perspectives and challenging stereotypes. And I feel like throughout the last seven years, I've started learning the true power of laughter in a society that is increasingly focused on acceptance and inclusivity, the, the, the open dialogue that we're pushing for mental health, neurodiversity, and disability is creating a more compassionate society, or at least heading toward one. <laughs> but the thing is, by, by openly encouraging people to talk about this stuff and, and talk about topics that were once and still are to many to be considered taboo, we are creating a more understanding and empathetic world. In 2019, we performed that show in Finland, and there was a young woman in the audience with Tourette syndrome who has coprolalia and coprapraxia, which means that she was shouting swear words at us and sticking up her middle fingers at us through the entirety of our set. We made it a thing individually to not reference her at all, just simply let her exist. And, and, and like, just let her be there, right? The thing is that we knew what was going on. We knew she wasn't purposefully intending to heckle or interrupt the show. She came up to us afterward and said that was the most normal she had ever felt in public. And that hit me so hard. Because simply being in public is oftentimes a massive struggle for people with Tourette syndrome. But all of this stuff, I, I, we kept doing all this stuff. And afterward, I started realizing that because of doing this show and because of pushing people to talk about this stuff, I've started noticing more and more here in Iceland within our community, more people are asking questions and supporting others rather than simply mocking them. And yes, it is becoming more of a, a societally driven thing of acceptance and change in general, but society only grows when we as individuals push for change. I've also noticed more and more of my friends are reaching out to me simply to check up on me, see how I'm doing. And I really appreciate that because oftentimes my friends see that I need help before I do. My cat actually also helps. Uh, well, at least tries. Uh, my, my cat knows I have Tourette syndrome. So, so the thing is, I have this tick when I'm laying in bed where my leg kicks a lot like this. And my cat, Omen, noticed I was doing this one night and really wanted to help. So she jumped up on the bed and she laid down on my leg to calm the tick. I mean, I launched her like a cannonball, but... <laughs> I'll be honest, I have no idea how many lives she's got left. <laughs> But she noticed that didn't work and still wanted to help. So she came up on the bed and she noticed that another tick that I have is my hand shakes a lot like this. And she was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll help that one. Lay down on that hand. But of course it didn't do anything. So she was like, you know what? I still want to do something. So she came up and she rubbed herself up against my face. If anything, just to let me know that she was there and that she cares for me. And it would have been really sweet if I wasn't allergic to cats. <laughs> So my face starts swelling up, my, my nose gets all puffy, my eyes start watering, and right as I get to that moment where I stopped breathing, 
I looked down and realized my leg, it stopped moving. Oh, my hand, it stopped shaking. And Omen just stands up and goes, yeah, forget medication. That's how you cure Tourette's. <laughs> so how is laughter the best medicine? Well, laughter helps make, make learning more fun. It makes understanding more interesting. It helps people connect on a closer level. It, it helps us realize that while our struggles in life are oftentimes very terrifying and very painful, laughter helps us remember that we have a power over them that they will never have. The power to keep fighting. 